I'm Matthew Sadler. And I'm WAM Natasha Regan. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Schliemann defense, and we're going to have a look at how Alpha Zero handles the black and then the white side of it. Uh, the Schliemann defense is introduced by the following moves. Uh, white plays e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, and now this very aggressive move, f5. I always think of the Schliemann as an aggressive opening where black is trying to get the initiative right from the outset, a bit like uh, King's Gambit for white. With black, Alpha Zero comes up with a brand new idea against one of white's most popular lines. This involves casting queenside for black and then marching with his rook's pawn, this time the h pawn. On the other hand, with white, Alpha Zero also comes up with a new idea involving a march of the rook's pawn, but in white's case, it's marching the a-pawn. Yeah, and that game uh, actually improves on a, on a top-level game that was played in, uh, in 2016, where um, David Navarra, the 2700-rated uh, uh, Czech player, had the white pieces. It's all, you know, really interesting stuff and uh, actually, you know, very important for, um, uh, for modern theory in this line. So I hope you enjoy it and let's dive into the games. So in this game, we're going to have a look at the, uh, uh, the game in which Stockfish was white and Alpha Zero was black. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, f5. And here white has um, a whole range of possibilities. Um, this was as far as the TCEC book went. So these moves were pre-stipulated for the um, for both uh, engines and now they had to make some choices of their own um, and here Stockfish chose uh, one of the main lines knight c3 and um, alpha zero reacted in the following way f takes e4 knight takes e4 and now it played the modern main line oops terribly sorry knight f6 um, attacking the knight on e4 d5 was the old main line and this led to one of my favourite Schliemann games of all time, which was the match between Jan Timmen and John Spielman in 1989 for the World Championships. And before that game, or over the summer, John Spielman had been asking around about what openings he might play as black in the match. And one of the things I actually suggested to him was, why don't you try a Schliemann? One of my friends had been very keen on the Schliemann and learning all the theory. And it amused John at the time, and then he went ahead and played it, and he won this brilliant game in 30 moves. Yeah, that was absolutely yeah, crucial uh, in the match situation at the time. Um, nowadays, uh, d5 is under a bit of a theoretical cloud, and uh, knight f6 is, um, um, is the main move. Um, yeah, White's got a number of uh, ways of, of dealing with this. Uh, Stockfish actually plays one of the most popular ways, which is just to go after this pawn on e5. Um, and what Black does is Black gives up the pawn, sacrifices the pawn, and looks for counterplay. Um, yeah, what is Black's counterplay? Well, Black's got a damaged pawn structure, but he has got the two bishops. So, uh, and a little bit of time, white isn't uh, that developed yet. So, uh, he's got to try and make something of that. Funnily enough, um, black's main idea, uh, in this position has been to play the move queen e6. And then black is going to, um, force the exchange of queens and then try and find compensation for the, uh, sacrifice pawn in an ending. Uh, with the two bishops. It's sort of okay for black, but um, but black is definitely suffering a little bit in order to make the draw. Um, Alpha Zero plays something that has never been played before, um, much more aggressive, um, and really very, very interesting. I think it's uh, it's going to be, uh, I'm sure this is going to become the, uh, the major way to play this position in the future. Alpha Zero played simply bishop b7, castles, and castles queenside. Very, very interesting, very, very sharp. 
Um, so stockfish reacted now in a in a very interesting way. Um, I mean, I was looking at uh, at ideas like playing uh, d4, but um, and you know trying to maintain that knight on e5. But of course, that knight is going to be a target. Um, black can play c5 to uh, to undermine the d4 pawn and also open the uh, the line of the bishop on b7. Um, and of course, um, a rook is going to come to e8 as well, opposite the queen on uh, on e2. So what Stockfish does is is very interesting, actually. Uh, Stockfish um, avoids creating any targets and uh, just puts its pieces a little bit out of range. So it plays d3, rook d8 and knight c4. Uh, that knight is still very well placed on c4. It can even go round to a5 to um, uh, to attack the bishop on b7. But it just means that alpha zero really needs to, to work hard now to create some targets for attack in the in the white position. Now that you see it on the chessboard, it does seem to make sense that Black's castle queen side with that open f file and and looking at the opposite side castle and kings. It's funny no one's done that before. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, it's 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 very very logical. I think uh, probably what people got a little bit worried about was uh, the fact that Black's king is a little bit open mm -hmm. and uh, and this move knight c four is you know looks at knight a five could be quite nasty. Um, well, what Alpha Zero did here was very very typical. Um, it um, it often uses uh, the following idea, the following strategy as a, as a sort of a first wave um, against the opponent's king in order to uh, create some entry channels. Alpha zero went h5 and it's just aiming for h4 to h3 and uh, just going to try and create some light square weaknesses. You know, remember White's uh, exchanged off his light square bishop, so was missing a defender there. So Stockfish played queen e3, attacking the pawn on a7. Um, but Alpha Zero just ignored it completely with h4. Um, and actually taking this pawn on a7, <clears throat> pardon me, is um, rather dangerous. Um, if you play queen a7, there's two ways of playing. Um, actually, um, possibly the very best is to play bishop b4 to stop knight a5 and then follow up with uh, c6 to c5. That's probably the, the strongest. But just give an idea of what uh, of what black can do. Um, black could also play a move like c5, and if white carries on his attack with uh, with knight a5, you've got this very strong move, bishop takes g2, um, and uh, king g2, h3 check, king g1, queen g6 mate, and queen g2. Very nice. Yeah, that sort of uh, idea. I mean, this is not forced at all, but you sort of get... Um, the sense in which that H pawn is is sort of an really an integral part of uh, of Black's counterplay. It's, it's it's very nice. It's very nice. Um, well, Stockfish again carried on its uh, its uh, its strategy of uh, of not giving any targets and played this uh, this interesting idea Queen H three, blocking the H pawn with its queen. Now I might be inclined here as Black to carry on the attack, perhaps with a move like G five, pushing the pawns again. Um, on the king's side. Yeah, I mean it's um, um, it's a, a very you know very very obvious idea and um, and uh, it was kind of the thing I was expecting as well. Um, what Alpha Zero does is is slightly different um, and actually rather cunning. Um, actually, what Alpha Zero wants to do it wants to force forward its H pawn. That's what it really wants to do. But for that, it needs control of the king's side light squares. And um, well, I mean that's not easy to achieve. Uh, but it, but Alpha Zero comes up with a, a great little a great little way of doing it. Uh, caught me completely by surprise. Plays the move King B8. Um, so I think the first clue about what Alpha Zero is doing is that um, if White plays Queen D7, then this move Bishop C8 traps the Queen, which is uh, rather yeah. cunning. Um, and well, this also gives a little bit of a clue about what Alpha Zero is planning next, uh, because after Stockfish's Bishop D2, Alpha Zero went D5. And um, I think you can see which diagonal has been opened for the uh, for the light squared bishop. Um, Stockfish played bishop c3 just to deal with this attack on the knight, d4. And then bishop c8. Very nice, controlling g4. Exactly. And this, this king moved to b8, you know, got the king out of the way, but actually freed c8 for the bishop. Um, so, well, this queen does not have a, a great many squares, so Stockfish had to play queen f3. And then alpha zero took on f3 and went bishop e6. 
Um, and we've ended up uh, again in an ending, uh, but this is actually um, a pretty OK ending for, uh, for Alphazir. It's still a pawn down, the pawn it sacrificed early, but it's got the two bishops, the white king's open. There's this lovely target on f3, so white's uh, kingside uh, pawn majority has been um, has been uh, damaged. And um, <clears throat> Alphazir gave itself a 45% a expected score for black, which is a little bit worse, but, um, but pretty decent. And... Um, um, Stockfish tried for, uh, for quite a while, but didn't really get anywhere. And the game was uh, was drawn uh, in around 100 moves. So um, just a, a very interesting idea from uh, from uh, Alpha Zero, uh, just on move on move uh, on move nine, Bishop B7, and then Castle's Queen side, together with this concept of throwing forward the uh, the h pawn to create weaknesses in the um, in the white king side never been seen before i think we'll uh, we'll see it uh, we'll see it quite a few times again i think after this game now we're going to have a look at uh, at what alpha zero did with the white side of the uh, of the schliemann so again the moves e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 Bishop b5, f5 were stipulated by the TCEC book. And here Alpha Zero had to think about uh, what it wanted to play. And it came up with um, um, a very popular modern move, which is the move d3. In his book on the Schliemann, Junior Tay describes black play in this line as either going to be delightful or Dolesville. That's right. Yeah, black either gets a lot of fun or um, or ends up being um, being pressed and squeezed rather unpleasantly. Um, the nice thing about this move d3 is that um, well, in the previous game we saw how um, how black cleared the white uh, uh, cleared the center of white pieces and um, and got a lot of play through the center. Um, here, white maintains the centre and uh, well counters the main idea of f5, which is to clear away the uh, the e pawn. So Stockfish played uh, takes takes knight f6 castles. Um, again, Alpha Zero plays this very precisely. Um, knight c3 is uh, is um, uh, inaccurate because black plays bishop b4 and develops his bishop outside the pawn chain. Uh, so castles is uh, known best. And here, um, Stockfish um, avoids uh, the most aggressive line, bishop c5, and plays the move d6, um, which has, you know, however, also been played by uh, by a lot of strong players. It's interesting now to see um, Alpha Zero strategy. So, bishop c4. Um, I find this very, very typical of Alpha Zero. Um, after d6, protecting the pawn on e5, the bishop on b5 no longer has a, a real purpose anymore. And Alpha Zero, as soon as a piece doesn't have a purpose, it always likes to redeploy it immediately. It doesn't wait for it to be driven away, it goes for it immediately. And here this bishop on c4 is, uh, well, eyeing this rather vulnerable uh, a to g8 diagonal that, uh, well, a, a diagonal that black, uh, made a little bit weak himself by playing f5 on the third move and prevents black from castling kingside. Black plays bishop g4, h3. Um, that's, uh, um, also makes the bishop move away from the defense of the e6 square. So there's uh, now a nice, uh, empty e6 square for, uh, for white to exploit. Knight c3. Queen d7. It looks like we're heading towards another position where the kings have castled on the opposite side, so it could be an exciting game. Exactly, that's right. Um, because uh, Alpha Zero is stopping uh, Black from uh, casting king's side, uh, Black's going to put the, the king uh, on the queen side. Knight d5, um, occupying one of uh, one of White's uh, outposts, castles queen d3, getting the queen out of the pin of the, the bishop on h5, and here king b8. And we're actually following the game uh, Navara Azarov, uh, 2016. And uh, David Navara, uh, a very, very strong uh, Czech player, well over 2,700. Um, in this position, he played the move um, Bishop D2 and aimed to uh, get at Black's king uh, by playing the move B4 to B5. Alpha Zero played what we can only describe as an alpha zero like move in this position and actually continued with a march of the rook's pawn and played 12 a4 here yeah and this is actually i think this is stronger than what uh, navara played 
if you just imagine this a pawn is going to go all the way to a6 and if black then plays b6 then white plays bishop b5 and pins the knight to the queen um it's uh um yeah it really gives black a, a dilemma about how to deal with this um and i think that um that stockfish yeah, didn't do badly at all, to be honest. Um, uh, what Stockfish tried to do was to fight for the d5 and e4 squares, and uh, because those are the um, the uh, the points in White's position that are the easiest for it to attack, and it tried to to get White to to make some sort of concession. So so uh, Stockfish played uh, knight e7, um, attacking the the knight on d5 and threatening uh, a move like uh, knight takes d5 and then e5 to e4. So Alpha Zero played this aggressive move, Knight G5, aiming for those E6 and F7 squares, you know, which it's attacked with a bishop on C4. And then Stockfish carried on the fight with Bishop G6 attacking E4. It's a very tense situation. Um, but Alpha Zero, yeah, played a, a nice idea here. It played uh, Knight takes F6, GF6, Knight F7, um, forking the two rooks, Bishop F7, Bishop F7. And if we look at the result of, uh, of this position, then, um, well, we can see that, um, that Alpha Zero's, uh, concept in the opening is quite nice in actual fact. It's got the two bishops, um, all those black pawns on dark squares, um, well, they're, they're really missing the, the light square bishop. And, uh, of course, Alpha Zero has still got its idea of playing a5 to a6 and attacking on the, uh, on the queen side. Uh, Stockfish played uh, h5 in this position. Um, looks a little mysterious, but he wants to play bishop h6 to exchange off the um, uh, the dark squared bishops. Um, a5 and a6. And here um, there, there are several plans. Uh, to be honest, I quite like the idea of playing rook d1 just to uh, clamp down on the d-pawn and then pushing b4 to b5, which wouldn't have surprised me if Alpha Zero had done that, to be honest. Um, Alpha Zero played um, a different plan, actually keeping control with the pieces, which was also quite nice as well. It went queen b3, uh, knight c6, bishop e3, bishop h6, and then it shimmied around a little bit with the bishop, and then played this move rook a3, and after bishop e3, it took back with the f-pawn, Oh, well, that's interesting. Opening up the f file and attacking that f6 pawn. That's right. I mean, this this pawn on e3 it covers the d4 square, so the knight can't uh, get out to there. And yeah, this rook on uh, on f1 is now attacking f6. Um, now the game continued for, uh, and of course, this rook on a3 can also come round to b3 uh, at some stage in order to attack the king on b8. Um, the game was eventually drawn uh, in 155 moves. Stockfish held rook and bishop versus rook, the bad side, uh, of course. Um, but I think in general you can say that um, that this was not a pleasant position for uh, for black to play. Um, so, um, um, well, I think I can imagine that, uh, that Alpha Zero's concept here is, uh, will make uh, black players a little bit dubious about, mm. uh, about venturing this again. It's interesting. Um... People sometimes say queen and knight is going to be better than queen and bishop in a middle game, but Alpha Zero has chosen the other way around. Um, more in the end game uh, is what they normally say. I think that uh, those two pieces combine very well, but uh, certainly in, in a in a middle game with rooks on the board and with a uh, king still in danger, this is quite a nice uh, quite a nice attacking force mm. for. Uh, and that for bishop White. looks better than that knight just in those positions. Yeah, that knight is just actually trying to block mate uh, in uh, in this position. So again, a very interesting concept from uh, from Alpha Zero on the uh, white side of the Schliemann. And uh, well, I hope that uh, both with white and with black that uh, you've uh, learned a lot from these videos.